Hello everyone, welcome to the next episode of a Raven Call webinar series, a series where we aim to bring you all relevant information about cybersecurity and the intricate word around it. And also it's all based on our research and our expertise in the field for the past decades. I am your host, Victoria, and today I'm joined here by Koryak Uzan, who will tell you a little bit more about the organized cybercrime and the implications it causes to the way we perceive cybersecurity of all of the organizations and the cybersecurity field in general. So before we're going to delve into this topic, I would like you to introduce yourself and tell the viewers who you are, what you do, mm -hmm. and a little bit about that. Uh, hi, first of all. Uh, my name is Koryak Uzan. Uh, I'm one of the managing partners of Product. I'm kind of like a working as a Swiss knife in the company, mm -hmm. but mainly I oversee uh, threat intel and cyber intelligence operations mm -hmm. in general. Uh, I was involved heavily in the investigation phase of different matters that we have talked about, that we're going to be talking mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, I'm trying to provide you, I will try to provide you a perspective about uh, our take on things about the current mm -hmm. uh, status and the future of organized cybercrime, mm -hmm. ransomware, cyber fraud, and mm -hmm. everything in between. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you very much for the introduction. So then let's start thinking about the organized cybercrime as a bigger topic. So, you know, when you think about how to approach this in the first place, like why? Why do you think organized cybercrime is becoming and have has been consecutively becoming so popular among mm -hmm. threat actors? Because this is different than, you know, separated like threat actor attacks. This is mm -hmm. like high level of organization. Mm -hmm. So what is your take on this? So uh that's a very good question and usually i mean unfortunately right now the problem is when we are talking about organized cybercrime mm -hmm. or cybercrime in general mm -hmm. uh, people tend to think that these are dispersed individual mm -hmm. things that we are talking about or Unrelated. at most yeah mm -hmm. at most there are five six people teams that are working yeah. on some geeky stuff in order to gain access but unfortunately people forget that uh, most of these organizations are mo most of these criminal organizations mm -hmm. are billion dollar structures. <laughs> uh, we have actually proof about the fact that mm -hmm. some of the groups that we're, uh, we we're going to be talking about yeah. uh, have uh, get the got their hands on at least a billion dollar up until mm -hmm. this far. Mm -hmm. And when you think about that. I mean, very few cybersecurity companies globally yeah. have that kind of mechanism mm -hmm. or turnover. And mm -hmm. if you even think about the fact that they're not paying any taxes, they don't have any organizational, yeah. uh, I mean, formal structure, mm -hmm. this is a huge scenario. And it's kind of like an avalanche mm -hmm. because as these organiza organizations got bigger and bigger, mm -hmm. they have their hands on more resources, mm -hmm. which in turn mm -hmm. provide them more capabilities, mm -hmm. which in turn, unfortunately, got them, uh, enables them to have more resources as well. Yeah. So therefore, after a certain point, if they reach a specific size, mm -hmm. after that size, it's even more highly improbable to mm -hmm. take down their entire operation. And also there is a political aspect that comes into place. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, the, the law enforcement agencies uh, there are some regions in the world that that is very difficult to uh, even arrest, control mm -hmm. or terminate these operations. So it has been uh, led to this point in 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now, we're 100% sure that it will definitely gain more, uh, more speed. Mm -hmm. So it's like really rolling up because the way how you're describing it, like mm -hmm. those organizations, they really work as large corporation mm -hmm. it's kind of like the idea of a large corporation on the other side when of course they're doing a lot of illicit activities mm -hmm. they don't need to deduct taxes or anything of that exactly. sort but it really makes you wonder how come that they really reach this stage of like working so well how do they even come from like really small affiliation or like a group of people that are doing something to eventually a very sophisticated and successful organization that it's exploiting millions of companies or deploying ransomware and doing a lot mm -hmm. of questionable things. How do they reach this space? So uh, I think, so first yeah. of all, for many phases of this, of in the lifetime of, of a cyber criminal organization, mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, they have a recipe right yeah. now, a clear recipe. Mm -hmm. There has been some very successful examples mm -hmm. that everybody, including the underground, yeah. has witnessed. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, we know from the Evil Corp mm -hmm. about how to organize different operations yeah. simultaneously. Yeah. And we have the example of Lockbit. Mm -hmm. We have the example of how to run a successful affiliate model. So right now, even for example, for a threat actor that is decided to go the path of ransomware mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. there is a clear recipe. Mm -hmm. And also, again, we're seeing that the, the underground has learned a lot from, uh, from the private industry, mm -hmm. meaning that every single part of a huge operation yeah. is privatized mm -hmm. and provided in an as a service model. Mm -hmm. So right now, even with a with very limited knowledge, yep. uh, technical knowledge, mm -hmm. it's possible to buy uh, multiple phases of this operation as a service. Mm -hmm. So if you need some potential targets, mm -hmm. you can buy them. Mm -hmm. If you need some kind of let's say a uh, working exploit that you can yeah. use on them mm -hmm. you can you can buy that as well yeah. if you need uh different software along the way mm -hmm. you can buy them if you need some services in order to uh for your infrastructure yeah. you can buy them anonymity you can buy them mm -hmm. in order to wash launder your money mm -hmm. you can buy them i mean there are this readily available services mm -hmm. as well so mm -hmm. right now yeah, that's an unfortunate stage that we have ended mm -hmm. up with. Mm -hmm. And this as a service model on everything, malware as a service, yeah. ransomware as a service, infection as a service, traffic as a service, this comp uh, tailored access providers yeah. uh, as a, access this is brokers. also as mm -hmm. a service. Mm -hmm. So this enables, this, this makes it extremely easy to set up. To uh, even like enter yeah, the exactly, field. Exactly, exactly. As you're saying, I mean, like, if you don't really need extra, like, extra technical capabilities, then mm -hmm. it's easier. Would you say that, like, this modus operandi of threat actors, like, trying to, like, like, automatize or buy everything, is this something that it's sort of getting more popular in the past years? Or is this, like, a pattern that we have seen in the, I don't know, last decade? Like, if you're thinking about, you know, comparing what happened in the past and how the whole field is evolving in terms of like, yeah, the mode of operations that the cybercrime mm -hmm. uh, actors are showing. Mm -hmm. Do you see any patterns or any trends? Um, so the thing is, uh, I mean, let's, I mean, I know that there are state sponsored attacks, yeah. cyber fraud, ransomware, but let's talk about ransomware in mm -hmm. general, because I know that's the most damaging part, mm -hmm. I mean, financially and operationally. Still very so popular. When, uh, I think, the biggest problem mm -hmm. that uh, I mean has been was the fact that we have normalized. Yeah. I mean, the, the industry normalized paying the ransom because they feel this is the quick yes, exit for, from yeah. the situation, right? Yeah, yeah. Imagine, I mean, if for example, when people kidnap someone, yeah. I mean, there are a lot of bargains, mm -hmm. thoughts, discussions, mm -hmm. arguments, mm -hmm. whether or not to pay. Yeah. Imagine if, for example, paying in return for a kid is normalized, yeah. people would be jacking kids every All now the and then. Yes. Because they feel like it's going to be successful. Exactly. So that's, and also, uh, I'm not 100% sure about this, but people have even, it became even cheaper or more mm -hmm. easier to manage to set aside a certain sum of money to pay when it's, when you are when a data is exfiltrated yeah. or your operation is uh, suspended, uh, when compared against having an entire security operation, mm -hmm. etc. I mean, we norm the in the, the industry, private industry, yeah. normalize this, so this is terrible. Uh, but as a, I think in order to battle this mm -hmm. normalized wrong behavior, mm -hmm. fortunately, right now we're seeing most uh, criminal groups are being sanctioned yeah. so it will be the same as let's say giving money to a terrorist organization mm -hmm. or, a, or a criminal group mm -hmm. if you pay them mm -hmm. so that's the biggest fear and that's where it started leading into especially in europe five eyes communities yeah. globally etc mm -hmm. so and uh, even one or two of these threat actors you know taking in that list mm -hmm. and we're imminently started seeing their operation their revenue yeah. 
uh, being uh, plummeting. Extreme, plummeting, yeah. So it's already like taking, you know, taking place. Like everything is sort of mm -hmm. going down. Do you think that this will force them to change their approach towards how they're trying to compromise the victims? Mm, yes, by the way, uh, and also, yeah. So very clearly, we're mm -hmm. uh, right now uh, in a battle with extremely clever guys. Yeah. So, for example, back in the day, the standard TTP mm -hmm. would be, mm -hmm. uh, let's say, encrypting everything oper on the yeah. operational systems and halting their operation mm -hmm. and asking for ransom or, or they will, for example, they had to suspend their operation mm -hmm. for a certain amount of days. But people started heavily relying on better backup mechanisms. Yeah. Uh, and then they came up with exfiltrating uh, classified data mm -hmm. and then, you know, threatening the, the victim to, you know, reveal their yeah. data. So, so that changed, it, shifted mm -hmm. the argument. Mm -hmm. So right now that's also normalized, mm -hmm. but right now they're facing a problem with sanctioning. And then mm -hmm. I'm 100% sure that they're going to be coming with a, with, a, with a different scenario, including but not limited to, there may be many elements, yeah. more, uh, more, private, uh, I mean, threatening to leak more mm -hmm. private information, mm -hmm. the messing with more financial mm -hmm. elements, not uh, operational, mm -hmm. but financial elements, maybe uh, making it very difficult for victim organizations to comply with regulations. Mm -hmm. So there may be a lot of things. I'm 100% mm -hmm. sure they will be coming up with some new uh, stuff, definitely. So looking at the way how canny they are and how they can always evolve as, you know, all of the circumstances evolve with them, who would you say are the like main or biggest key players in the industry? You know, like seeing on all of the cases that we are working on and like seeing the threat actors, like who would you say are the players that are really mm -hmm. shaping the industry or has have shaped the industry so far? I mean, in order, I mean, uh, if I had to give uh, I mean, three groups. Yeah, let's say. Yeah. So, for example, in terms of business models and mm -hmm. how they operate, there are clearly multiple differences. Yeah. But Lockbit definitely yeah. is the one of the most prime examples mm -hmm. of how to run a successful affiliate network. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, still even the industry doesn't know the fact that when we're talking about Lockbit, mm -hmm. uh, we may be talking about any of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, mm -hmm. eight different affiliates. Yeah. And which Lockbit are we talking about? I mean, uh, is it the affiliate which are the ex uh, Conti guys or yeah. the affiliate which are more connected to Fin7 Group mm -hmm. or Evil Corp, etc. I mean, there are a lot of different mm -hmm. affiliates when we're talking about Lockbit. And this is, the, this is the success of the Lockbit operation, which is streamlining the affiliate network, mm -hmm. you know, to, to uh, really uh, superior business model yeah. than compared to other uh, ransomware groups. Mm -hmm. Because we have also seen other uh, groups that adopt a different methodology, for yeah. example. Lockbit provides a structure and, and, and people can adopt that and mm -hmm. run as an affiliate. Mm -hmm. And there can be multiple affiliates. It's like, a, uh, yeah, so, so this is a, a different approach. Mm -hmm. But in the case of, let's say, the white society, yeah. which is clearly uh, victimizing different health groups, mm -hmm. hospitals, etc., especially in the in in the US yeah. currently so they are different mm -hmm. and they adopt a different methodology mm -hmm. they i'm th re they resemble me a ctf group seriously yes because the way how they operate yeah. the way how they support each other uh -huh. uh, we have identified approximately either 6 or 7 members yeah and that's all Mm -hmm. And those are not independent affiliates. Those are working mm -hmm. uh, right next to each other, working on different cases, helping each other. If yeah. some of them reaches a dead end, let's say in terms of the escal escalation or yeah. pivoting or lateral movement or anything, mm -hmm. basically, the other one helps. They have a really nice... Uh, 
work Supportive management. Supportive I mean, relationships. Yes, yeah, so. I, 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 yeah, definitely. <laughs> I have worked with in in many companies yeah. uh, before. I mean, mm-hmm. not even in the field of cybersecurity. Yeah. And I have seen very few companies who are tracking the cycle of every project yeah. as diligently as by society, for example. That's quite meticulous yes, if you think about extremely it. Extremely meticulous, yeah. by the way. So, for example, for either it's a potential victim or it's um, it's a confirmed victim or mm-hmm. a victim which is kind of like that they are uh, doing on reconnaissance mm-hmm. currently, etc. Anyone that may be joining their team yeah. later on uh-huh. will know exactly what has been done, what kind of challenges have been faced, what kind of remediations mm-hmm. on their perspective that have been taken out, mm-hmm. uh, that have been carried out. So that level of meticulous work, mm-hmm. I, I very rarely seen. And that's a different model, by the way. Yeah. The, it's it's more like a not a conglomerate but a gang maybe mm-hmm. or, or or a small but a group. very organized yes. gang yes and if we have the example of wizard spider for example yeah. the guys who were uh infecting uh people with with, mm-hmm. with conti as a as yeah. the locker uh, software so that's something completely different as mm-hmm. well that's something in between these two methods mm-hmm. because they were in their own essence they were and they were like a company basically mm-hmm. not a conglomerate but a company because oh, they were hiring yeah. mm-hmm. people to do very specific stuff but that specific people didn't have any kind of visibility over different parts yeah. of the operation so for example the people who were uh, responsible for the initial in, uh, mm-hmm. infection were an affiliate the people who were, you know, selecting different victims. Yeah. Uh, but, for example, the people with the Panthers capabilities didn't have knowledge about what's going on on other victims as well. So mm-hmm. th- that was more like a company. So mm-hmm. in general, it's possible to talk about multiple different scenarios mm-hmm. when, uh, when we talk about ransomware. Yeah, because obviously, like, if you're mentioning various groups, as you pointed out, whether it's like Lockbit, Vice Society or Visit Spider, they all crack the code in a different way, right? So yeah, they do have functioning businesses, mm-hmm. maybe varying in sizes or varying in, you know, the amount of victims or mm-hmm. whatever they're trying to be up to. But at the end of the day, they're really functioning. Yes. So do you also see some differences or similarities in the way how they're choosing their victims or how they're trying to, you know, deploy the ransomware, lock the structures? Are there any patterns that also could be seen amongst all of them or mm-hmm. actually all of them also in this way about victimology, they have different approaches? Again, uh, very nice question, by the way. So the thing is, uh, when people think uh, there are currently two train of thoughts mm-hmm. that people unfortunately arrive a little uh, yeah. misguidedly, gotcha. some people think that they are r- randomly targeted some mm-hmm. people think that they are intentionally and specifically yeah. targeted yeah. it's neither of both or it's uh, it's neither of them or both of them at the same time which means yeah. everything is semi targeted mm-hmm. which means that so let's go with the example of not even ransomware for example the silverfish campaign of evil mm-hmm. corp that we have a mm-hmm. report on our website so what they were doing that at the very first distribution phase uh, or mass infection Mm -hmm. phase of the campaign, Mm -hmm. that's not targeted. Mm -hmm. They were just getting as many potential victims as possible. Spread the net. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and by uh, using that pool of previously Mm -hmm. infected base group of potential victims, Mm They were choosing the important ones at that stage. For example, in the example, Cubot recently, yeah. uh, you know, not a, recently taking down operation, mm-hmm. for example, the mass uh, email malware campaign, mm-hmm. for example, which infected more than hundreds of millions of people, by the way. Uh, so, the, again, uh, the Wizard Spider operation, mm-hmm. for example, they were using Qbot. So Qbot yeah. was a not targeted malware. Mm-hmm. The the goal, and that's a that may be an independent uh, affiliate operation that yeah. we're not sure. So, anyways, 
So, for example, if we're talking about Conti or Wizard Spider, mm -hmm. what we have seen is that at the very first page, they are just getting as many victims as possible without yeah. looking. And then once they infect people, mm -hmm. they then start choosing of the people in order to same time save time or yeah. have a better efficiency. They then start, oh, that's a hospital. Oh, that's a police force. Oh, that's a <laughs> ministry. And then they, mm -hmm. yes, exactly. And then they choose. And we have seen on multiple occasions that these mm -hmm. groups have people who mm -hmm. were cherry picking potential victims by eye. I mean, just by yeah. looking. Oh, that's, an, and they were just putting on notes on top of each other. Potential med, medical, potential so you hospital. you can even potential. see the motives and you can try yes. to understand it's like, oh, apparently this would be a very mm -hmm. uh, high profile victim or someone that could eventually bring us a lot of money. So this seems like the, the, the direction that we should be moving forward. No, no, yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, yeah. for example, if there's an extremely popular exploit at, that may enable, for example, global mass yeah. scanning. What they will definitely do is mm -hmm. globally scan everyone. First, look uh, who you can uh, infect mm -hmm. or exploit. I mean, depending on what kind of operation that you're running. Yeah. And then from that first uh, pool of victims, mm -hmm. they start choosing. I mean, this is the case even on the uh victimized governmental ministries mm -hmm. etc they were first without being uh unintentionally mm -hmm. targeted mm -hmm. they were infected due to ignorance etc loss of i mean i mean a lot of loopholes, a lot of in, loopholes place. Mm -hmm. in place and then once they show up in that uh panel mm -hmm. which most of the time can be system bc malware etc yeah. and then they are picked oh we have infected actually hmm, a good source a, a of ministry, money. <laughs> yeah, and I say exactly. It's oh, so sad. And they it's are like... also using public resources for you know the company databases that give out like know, all of the value. revenue yes. and every. Oh, that's oh, better that's because a... you can target someone. Oh, they have like you know revenue over I don't know one hundred million. Yes. That's perfect. That's. There, like, this is always like a double sword, you know, because mm -hmm. on one hand you are, you have to be very transparent. Sometimes there are like documents that you mm -hmm. have to show, especially as a public entity or even mm -hmm. private organizations. But then there is always the other side who is reading the information as well. No, definitely, definitely. <laughs> so then in this case, when so many things are disclosed nowadays, what do you think would be like early warnings for the companies or how they can actually protect themselves if they know that this is luring from the shadows? Mm, so, I mean, we're organizing this podcast yeah. as product in an uh, uncommercial manner, mm -hmm. I mean, in a not so commercial manner. Yeah. But that's what we are focusing on currently. Mm -hmm. And without sounding too marketing, I can safely say that that's what we are focusing at yeah. the moment with different platforms like, mm -hmm. like USDA, Blindspot, etc. Mm -hmm. And what we try to achieve, and if people can achieve this on their own as well, yeah. good for them. Yeah. But what we are trying to achieve is that we are trying to get uh, some indi indicators. Mm -hmm. uh, so the thing is, for all of these specific groups, mm -hmm. if they are state-sponsored, APT, ransomware, etc., yeah. we know their entire attack chain. Mm -hmm. We know what kind of not so, I mean, seemingly not so important malware that they used to infect first, mm -hmm. and then they start building onto. So, uh, by using this information, that tells us mm -hmm. the fact that, I mean, uh, in order to also support the previous the argument that we made in the previous yeah. question, we are trying to identify mm -hmm. uh, the the potential victims who are infected yeah. with these stage one malwares mm -hmm. or mass distribution campaigns. Mm -hmm. So there is definitely, it, it becomes a threat actor's call if they will be uh, cherry yeah. picked or not, etc. Yeah. And we are giving them a specific uh, probability scoring. Mm -hmm. So that's, for example, uh, they can definitely start working uh, uh, with uh, with us, we have a platform for this. Mm -hmm. Or if they definitely need to do so, they can read our reports. Mm -hmm. For example, we really specifically give technical information about what kind of malware or distribution yeah. campaigns that they use in the first place. So 
they can themselves maybe learn what mm-hmm. to watch out for. Mm-hmm. Uh, and by the way, interestingly, I mean, it may be some, we may be going off track with this, but mm-hmm. uh, I think what they can do is that they can make sure that the the basics are definitely fulfilled, which yeah. is using multi-factor authentication for the VPN, a hundred percent. But there are I don't I, I'm not going to tell which one, but there are really high-profile groups yeah. whose only business is taking uh, compromised VPN credentials that doesn't require multi-factor authentication from tailored access brokers, mm-hmm. and then they just use that and yeah as the initial access as, yeah. as the initial access i mean and there has been maybe i mean you're aware of this mm-hmm. uh there has been thousands of thousands of thousands of victims yeah and you you would be amazed uh at how big these uh, organizations mm-hmm. are yeah because it's still successful they yes. still have enough data to work with right mm-hmm. yes 100 percent. if you feel like those are the basics but many people are either not aware or they think this is not really necessary mm-hmm. but now with all of the you know like extra threats or like in general sometimes it feels like the threats they don't need to become super sophisticated sometimes mm-hmm. they're just good enough for people to not notice them so what would you also say are sort of like future threats or like imminent, urgent, you know, threats that mm-hmm. are emerging in the field that also people should be aware of? So right now, uh, I mean, it, it, it won't sound super advanced, but mm-hmm. right now, so there are two things that are paving the way for mm-hmm. this more elaborate cyber uh, for, for for this ransomware campaigns. Yeah. The first one being uh, the tailored access brokers, especially mm-hmm. there are tailored access brokers who not only provide compromised accounts, but yeah. they test it out, etc. So they are making a name for themselves eventually. Yeah. So and by the way, one of this, for example, tailored access uh-huh. brokers. Have jo- is the guy who most recently taking and uh, taking included in the most wanted list of the FBI. So it's it's He's making a name for yeah, himself. Yeah, it's okay, not, you know, mm-hmm. a, a very it's not a very generic trait. Yeah. threats by the way, it's yeah. something extremely important. So that's one. And secondly, there has been a very systematic mess exploitation mm-hmm. that, is, that are going on especially for different uh for different vpn providers yeah. that i mean uh, most recently that we started picking up a lot of this in mm-hmm. uh in especially united kingdom and us mm-hmm. uh so i would really watch out for mm-hmm. this as well and sometimes uh only patching i mean in terms of the Making sure that everything is patched is also yeah. not enough because they are adopting of different uh, methodologies as well. So I would as well, uh, I would advise people to get a keen interest in threat mm-hmm. intel and read about the latest mm-hmm. uh, tools and techniques in the area to protect themselves the better. I mean. But these two things, I mean, mass exploitation, especially the, mm-hmm. the, the VPN uh, service mm-hmm. one, and the second would be tailored access brokers getting compromised, either providing direct access or compromised VPN accounts mm-hmm. or a lot of accounts, mm-hmm. and MFA, forcing MFA. Mm-hmm. So these three would be very, uh, very important. Yeah, I think this is important to share because obviously as the cyber field is evolving at a rapid speed, so sometimes it's hard to keep up with everything, but it's still good to know that you have the basics covered Mm -hmm. or at least understanding, you know, that maybe educating yourself in the first place and really seeing what is happening in the field, either whether it's your dedicated IT Mm -hmm. teams or cybersecurity teams or even like implementing, you know, the solutions that are really supposed to protect you in advance. I think we both feel that this is really important and sometimes quite omitted by the companies, which I find really sad, but it's understandable that trying to find your way in the field and figure out what would be the best approach Mm -hmm. to not get compromised. It's sometimes quite overwhelming, but on the other hand, like, especially with what you see that is happening, do you feel like in a couple of years, there's literally going to be almost every company that has been in certain way compromised? Do you think this is an actual probability? Um. Yeah, so it it's 
not very possible or maybe uh -huh. ethical for me to say that. Yeah. But definitely every single company will face any incident. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's first thing. And uh, depending on their size, on what the trend mm -hmm. is, their incidents nature will, mm -hmm. uh, will vary. Definitely. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, th at the end of the day, everybody had... So it's not possible to proxy mm -hmm. your responsibilities a hundred percent to a third party. So, for yeah. example, we are a threat intel company. You need to definitely make sure to know at least to a certain extent mm -hmm. about what kind, what is a quality threat intelligence. Yeah. So, for example, even in the area of let's say compromised credentials, I mean, mm -hmm. getting a feed about compromised credentials, mm -hmm. right? What kind of credentials are people providing you? Is yeah. it really valuable? Because the thing is, uh, for example, your a compromised account belonging mm -hmm. to your organization may show up in one of the most important tailored access brokers that yeah. we know that we are a hundred percent sure to be working mm -hmm. with. Let's say Lockbit. Yeah. Or it may show up in a extremely generic sixteen-year-old boy's red line stealer campaign. Yeah. So the context mm -hmm. matters a lot, mm -hmm. and you need to ask questions or at least know the difference between these two mm -hmm. as the buyer. So it's not that's in in the area of security. It's mm -hmm. definitely quality over quantity. Yeah, because at the end of the day, if you have something taken out of the context, but it still creates some sort of fear mm -hmm. and you don't know what are you even fearing, it's different than having data that are direct re directly relevant to you and uh -huh. to your organization. And they really have the, the ability to change how, you know, like your security will be perceived and handled mm -hmm. in the future. No, definitely, 100%. I mean, it's like... Uh, I mean, you need to take a little bit responsibility mm -hmm. in understanding. I mean, we have passed the point yeah. that you can say, "Oh, that's the technical stuff. I'm not in charge of that, etc." Yeah, if you, you this. know, adopt that kind of stuff as yeah. a decision maker in a company, yeah. you'll have a really bad time in the future. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of like you. You need to. Yeah, and this take, is not take... to sound threatening. It's like based on the nature of your work and the nature of what we do in general. We can see what is happening and how more, I think, aggressive the the, the threat actors are become mm -hmm. in the way of obtaining what they want to obtain. Mm -hmm. No, no one is going to be saying like, oh, this is just so sad. Like I didn't have the basic protection measures or like I was not aware. Like this is always something that companies or any organization should be handling beforehand. Mm -hmm. No, definitely, 100%. I mean, do you have any last tips for them what to do just to make sure that they can sleep peacefully at night? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to anyway. put it that way. <laughs> like, oh, I'm not stressed, it's okay. <laughs> so the thing is, I know that the more you read into, it triggers mm -hmm. a certain degree of paranoia. Yeah, I mean, stressful, 100% sure yeah. That, right? So therefore, I mean, I would advise... Uh, It's not, I know that there's a certain degree of comfort in, yeah. uh, in, in not caring or delegating these responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm a huge mm -hmm. advocate of delegation as well. Yeah. But uh, you really need to, I mean, for example, if you're a legal company, you're an insurance company, medical mm -hmm. company, etc. Uh, if you're a decision maker listening to this, that is not, that doesn't have a cybersecurity yeah. background. To try to learn about it mm -hmm. and ask as many uh, questions as you can to whomever responsible mm -hmm. until it makes sense to you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. or else mm -hmm. it will definitely catch up on, on you yeah. as the decision makers. Yeah. I mean, this will happen. This has happened before. Yeah. And uh, the things that you're going to be facing, facing most probably mm -hmm. will, will be extremely challenging. Mm -hmm. I mean... Uh, even before things start uh, branching out, mm -hmm. just ask questions. I mean, just try to yeah. understand mm -hmm. what people are doing without sounding so technical. That would be my tip.
take mm -hmm. to any decision maker who mm -hmm. may or may not be cybersecurity oriented. No, this is very nice because at the end of the day, as you said, you can't really omit that part. So just yeah. to be peaceful and happy in your heart before you go to bed, just make sure that you understand and you always get in touch with people who really know what they're doing as well, to put mm -hmm. it that way. Definitely. Today you shared a lot of useful tips with us, so thank you very much for that, Kodiak. Uh, I really hope that whoever is watching this will be able to find something useful and valuable in here. And yeah, as we already mentioned before, if someone has any extra questions or queries that would like to address, they can always let us know. So thanks again and enjoy the rest of your day. I hope so. Thank you, Vicky. It was nice being here. Uh, hope to continue this series in the future. Thank you. See you. See you.